Hello, this is Mark from Gary's Guitars in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and I'm here to talk about watts and amplifiers, big amps and little amps, uh, what makes an amp loud, what makes you know, some amps louder than others, and what that means to what you need to perform in different situations. So, let's talk about watts for a second. Watts is not a measurement of loudness. Watts is a measurement of power. And there's an equation that goes into calculating it, and this equation can be used. Now there's standards for it, and we do, uh, you know, RMS wattage, uh, which is um, which is kind of an average along the line, rather than just peak wattage. Um, so th there's a lot of ways to uh, to fudge the numbers in wattage, um, and then there's also perceived loudness. I have a 12 watt amp that could make you leave the room. Um, it's it seems as loud as a uh, 35 watt amp um, <clears throat> but it's just because of uh, of how it affects you when you hear it the overtone series the amount of distortion in the overtones that all figures into it so and then we get two watts what we call traditional solid state watts or transistor and then we have this new class D amplification which blows the roof off of the whole wattage thing so we'll start with tubes. Um, it was very difficult to make loud amps at one time. Um, Fender, of course, uh, was the first company to really start making loud amps with the Showman and the Twin. Uh, being able to put four 6L6s in a row, uh, two push-pull pairs, and um, getting nearly 100 watts, or uh, you know, claiming to get 100 watts, depending on also depends on the impedance. Like I, I think I alluded to that before. Um, there, you know, wattage is an equation, and uh, some of those numbers can be if you lower your impedance, uh, your your wattage goes up. Um, but uh, Marshall came along with the Marshall back here, taking Fender's design and um, and tweaking it. Uh, one thing is switching to the more common European EL34 tube, which is a little more hi-fi, a little more wide range, and a little more more high wattage. Fender himself was always on a quest to, the problem with loud amps is they would blow up. And especially when we're talking about in the 60s, um, guitarists would, it would frequently blow up or overheat their amplifiers. Usually blowing output transformers, definitely blowing tubes. They were working on the edge of the amp's ability because there was nearly no such thing as a PA. There was the Shure Vocal Master, um, which is ridiculous. Uh, it was a 100 watt vocal PA that um, it's hardly louder than, than anything, not a loud PA, and uh, so we would, uh, and you know, PAs got developed over time, but there wasn't, uh, the reason you couldn't hear the Beatles singing was in Shea Stadium, with everyone screaming, is their amps were all on 10, and they were yelling as loud as they could, and they didn't have the power behind them to push that out. Or Jimi Hendrix with several Marshall stacks, uh, just to get now uh, the people the Marshall stacks behind his head are what the people in the back row were listening to as well uh, They might have put a microphone in front of a recording or but but really sound reinforcement as we know it today didn't exist so uh, It was really important to get really ridiculously loud amps and the the Ampeg SVT was the first ridiculously loud bass amp that didn't blow up um, Coming in at the claiming to be about 300 watts um, it had three pairs of KT88s. Was it KT88? You know, don't quote me on that, but uh, you know, very high-powered tube and three pairs of them, and it makes a wonderful distorted and, and, and luscious sound. And there's just a need for more and more wattage over time. And people wanted to be like their heroes, so they wanted to play the amps that their heroes played. Then we have solid state come in, and the solid state amps came in, and everyone's like, these things are quiet. I don't get it. Uh, solid state should give you more headroom. You should be able to. They, they don't use as much um, electricity. They don't need to. Um, they're not limited in their headroom as much. They don't have to be transformer coupled, although some were, but they can be uh, capacitor coupled on the way out. So that output transformer blowing up was, was not necessarily a problem. And yet, um, until the later 70s, they couldn't compete with the power of the tube amps because of the perceived loudness. And this is something when we talk about, you know, tube watts being louder than solid state watts. This is what people are talking about. Kind of that era 
when uh, your overtone series was so robust in the tube amps and your overtones were so musical and they were interacting with each other and it was just uh, magnificent sounding, still is to this day, uh, but it just made a 50 watt tube amp sound louder than a 100 watt solid state amp. Um, then the solid state and you know solid state amps it became easier and easier to make louder solid state amps um, but they lacked what we call tone and we didn't really need that much headroom as we moved into the current era say the 90s when um, when uh, PAs got really good and you know, all the clubs started having PAs just there all the time you show up and there's a dude with really long curly hair and and to run the sound who doesn't want to be there and yet you have microphones everywhere and a, a giant powerful PA and it becomes less important like from the Hendrix era of having three Marshall stacks um, you sound can be reinforced by uh, a PA system um, nowadays we have two other factors factor into that we have uh, what we call class D amplification which is ridiculously loud or can be and clean usually interestingly clean um, and that's entering the guitar amp world. Uh, it pre previously, like 10 years ago, it really entered the PA world where you have these small, compact, the QSC is the best example of these, these little amplifiers that just, just kick out a lot. And they move speaker cones and kick out a lot of full range sound. And, um, and now that's moved into the amplifier world too, especially bass amps. Whenever we start showing up with these little bass heads that are this big. Um, that were 300 watts and up. Um, it was because of this new kind of solid state. So, massive headroom. That's important in bass, for example. Like I said, the SVT became the standard for that. Um, but let's talk about the current era. Like I said, uh, a lot of people are, you know, a lot of PAs everywhere. So this is the advice I give to people, generally speaking. Um, a 15 watt amp is fine these days. You can show up and play gigs with 15 watt amps. You can play in a room with a drummer with a 15 watt amp or 12. I use a 12 watt amp, a Princeton or uh, some other pair of 6L6 kind of a 6V6 kind of amp. Uh, can keep up with the drummer in the room, and then when they start miking up the drummer, you can mic up the amp too, and you both get louder together. And so I always like to say the bass player, you should take the two guitar amps, add them up, multiply that by two, and that should be the wattage of the bass player's amp. So if the guitarists have 15 watt amps and there's two of them, the bass player should have a, um, let's see, 30, 60, or usually 100. You don't want to show up at a gig with less than 100 bass watts, but uh, bass has to be more powerful than the guitar all the time. But if you're talking about guitar, 15 watt amp can, can do it. People talk about these tone amps, or these 5 watt amps, these 1 watt amps, these 7 watt amps. Uh, return to these small amps because they want the amp to break up and distort earlier and people have less of a need to be loud also people don't want to hear loud music like they used to just kind of in general and that's a thing so uh, even the, these low wattage but very interesting sounding amps are really coming into fashion right now uh, the reissue of the Champ from Fender Fenders to reissue of the Champ to be just like the old Champ kind of Champ and um, and those things are really cool. Uh, and the original Champ was 6 or 7 watts or something like that. It may be that much. And uh, people love that overdriven sound uh, of an amp working too hard. And your giant amps, including Marshall Stacks, are less expensive now however I will say there's a certain sound that you can only get with an array of speakers pushing being pushed by a loud head now this particular Marshall here and a lot of the 800s were only 50 watts uh, kind of like a mm, basement claims to be um, but they would just push a lot of sound because of being uh, because of the nature of their cabs the cab design was designed to push a lot of bass as well as treble out at the same time and uh, and help the you know the phase alignment was pretty cool having that kickback on the top um, a lot of innovations and it's a sound that you can't get any other way other than a digital simulator which brings us back to D um, class D amplification is the new trend it's what's behind the Fender Rumble and in, in the Fender um, Tone Master series uh, this is an amplifier that it's not so when you get the Tone Master Deluxe and it says it's a 22 watt amp I would doubt the actual amp is 22 watts. It's just simulating 22 watts. 
So there's a lot more actual headroom in the power amp section. It's just the preamp section is making it sound like a 22 watt amp used to sound. So to summarize, um, wattage is, uh, can be a tricky thing. We used to need crazy loud amps. We don't necessarily need crazy loud amps anymore. A 15 watt amp can be good. 30 is great, 35 is great, 50 is great. Use the amp that gets the tone that you want. And then, uh, you know, use sound reinforcement to get that tone louder, uh, if need be, or use two amps, and that, that's pretty tremendous, too. Uh, the trend in general is people going to smaller amplifiers, uh, which means that you can get deals on big amplifiers, which is good if you love those big amplifiers. And like the Marshall Stack and the SVT, nothing quite sounds like some of those big amplifiers do, even the simulations. So, I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. Gary's Guitar Sports in New Hampshire. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. Like, subscribe, really, you know, you know the drill. Uh, thanks for watching. Check out the other videos we have here, and um, we'll talk to you soon.